The Pieces Lie Where They Fell by Evil Humor Edited and co-authored by Anon E. Mouse Jr. Read for you by My Name is R. Chapter 30 Vittel, Nightblade, Page Turner, and Windbreaker Part 1 Vittel It had been thirty minutes since that chaos had happened, and Vittel had no idea what she should be doing. Vix Lee was sitting in the corner of the room, staying very quiet and glancing at everyone in the rest of the room every once in a while. Windbreaker had parked himself against the side of the kitchen door, holding an ice pack against his throat, an ugly bruise forming where Knight had smashed his wing against it. Rex was tending to Paige inside the kitchen, and the last they'd seen of the diamond dog was him looking very flustered, which worried Vittel greatly. And Knight... He had barely moved an inch from where it happened, muttering softly to himself and shaking ever so slightly. It was really scary, and she had no idea what she should be doing or saying. She was the leader of this crew, and she should be doing something. Anything. She wished that Vix Lee would make a joke or something. Anything to end the silence. Suddenly, there was a scraping as Knight got to his hooves, his voice becoming clearer. I... I have to see her, he said distractedly, licking his lips as he swayed on his hooves. Maybe this is what they... No. Vittle shared a look with Fix Lee, both looking worried as Windbreaker shifted around and stood upright. What did you say to me? I have to see her, Knight said, narrowing his eyes. I... Wind gasped for air, rubbing his throat, said, No. Knight growled, pawing the ground. What gives you the right to say that to me, Breaker? He spat out. I don't want you hurting her again. Wind tilted his head forwards, a similar furious look on his face. Blade, he spat out dropping the ice pack on the ground. "'How dare you, you piece of garbage!' Knight shouted. "'I would never hurt Paige!' "'Then why did you beat her, Blade?' Wind sneered at Knight, with the bat pony trotting angrily on the spot. "'It was a horrific mistake!' Knight yelled back. "'I would never intentionally hurt Paige Turner. I love her, something you, as a hatchery griffin, will never know.' Windbreaker clawed at the ground. At least I am not an antisocial loser who no doubts has mommy and daddy take care of all your little accidents. Knight narrowed his eyes and spoke very calmly. What are you implying, Griffin? He said the word Griffin as if it were a slur. You never hitting Paige? Wind let out an ugly chickle, chuckle. One word, Blade. Lies. Knight stood still before letting out a feral sounding snarl. You worthless piece of trash. No wonder your parents gave you up when you were born. Take that back or else. Or I will have an. Wind spat out, his face furious as Knight was. Accident? And that was it. Both Windbreaker and Nightblade threw themselves at each other, with Vix Lee and Vittel reacting just as quickly. Vix Lee had Windbreaker penned to her chest with Signor Hardhead held across his chest, while Vittel used her arms and tail to hold Knight back. <laughs> Vittel glanced at Wind glared at Windbreaker, furious that he would actually do something so stupid as to provoke Knight like this. They didn't need this right now. She waited for Windbreaker to acknowledge her. He looked at her before nodding his head and shifting his eyes downward in guilt. Good. That was settled. Now to deal with Knight. Look, Knight, this stupid fighting of yours, it has to stop and... 
Knight all of a sudden made this weird, angry, growling sound before pushing out of her grip. You know what? I have had enough, Knight shouted in her face, jabbing a hoof onto her chest. I have put up with you blaming me for everything that has gone wrong, you treating me like utter trash for no reason, and I kept my mouth shut for some unknown reason. But no more. I have made the worst mistake in my life, and when I am trying to make up for it, he is trying to stop me, and you're blaming me for this. He shook his head before glaring at her, baring his fangs. I don't know or care what your life was like before all this began, but I had one. It might not have been the best life, but it was mine, and you forced me to throw it all away, and yet you still mock me at every turn, and... He shoved her to the side and stormed towards the door. I, he snarled, have had enough of you. Whirling around, he stalked towards the edge of the clearing. I am done with this, with all of this. Forget balance and its quest. I quit. And before anyone could say a word... He'd spread his wings and flew off. Vittle was left speechless at this, her mind racing in how to get him back here, and, hopefully, back to his senses. He's right, Windbreaker spat out. Oh no, you do not get to say that, Vittle growled, almost pouncing him over. Tu no puedos cambiar de lados así de repente. Tengo que aguantarlos a ustedes dos idiotas peleando todo el tiempo y tú no puedes saltar en su defensa así como ese. Windbreaker blinked in confusion at her before she realized she'd lapsed into Berenicio again. I said, you idiota. Why are you taking his side now? Vittle glared hard at him. What, do you like him now? You two friend? No, I hate him! Wind hissed in pain, rubbing his throat before glaring at her. But he was right that you usually blamed him for everything. No, I didn't! Yes, you did, Vittle, Vixley said, walking towards her. You always treated him like trash, mocking him to his face. Being a real, I didn't do that, Vittle shouted, shocked that they were making this up about her. I treated him like I would treat the rest of you. Enough, Rex growled as he stepped out of the kitchen, cleaning his paws with a towel. I have witnessed you treating Knight poorly for some time, and I have been meaning to have a chat with you about it. Vittle snorted and was about to rip into Vrex when something dark behind him shoved him out of the way. Paige looked like trash. While Rex had done his best to bandage her, her entire face was... <clears throat> Rex looked like trash. While Rex... Paige looked like trash. While Rex had done his best to bandage her, her entire face was still battered and bruised from where she had been struck with one eye swollen shut, and she stank of healing ointment. But despite all that, she seemed to be very much aware of what was going on, and looked mighty angry, with both her wing... with how her wings were buzzing around, and the fact she was baring her fangs. She began to walk into the living room, hissing in pain and stumbling a bit, but she shook her head when Rex went to support her. Vittle, what happened between you and Knight? Page growled, placing a hold hoof against her face. Tell me exactly what you said to get him to leave like that. I didn't say anything wrong, Vittle snapped back. Look, I told him that we didn't need him, and a knight and wind fighting every five... No, you did not, Vix Lee said. Well, you might have wanted to say it, but all you got out was telling Knight his fighting was stupid and he had to stop before he left. Paige swore before leaning on the sofa for stability. Look, it might not be clear to you, but Knight has several issues. Wind seemed like he was about to open his mouth, but Paige just glared him down. One of them is ponies telling him what he has to do. It came from his parents saying no to him. Vittle let out an annoyed grunt and rolled her eyes. Oh please, he's a noble brat. Getting told no is just... No, Knight, 
I cannot come out and play with you. I am far too busy. Page stalked in close. No, Knight, I cannot read a bedtime story to you. Your father and I are both too tired, and we need to get up early tomorrow. No, Knight, you cannot go to Regal's birthday party. We are having several important guests today, and you must be on your best behavior. No, Knight, you must see to Striking Blade while your brother is visiting us. We can have your birthday dinner on the weekend. Knight, stop acting like a child. It's just your birthday. We stopped giving out gifts and really celebrating them years ago. Page stopped and glared into Vittle's eyes. This was all before he was ten. And then there was his talent mitzvah. She grumbled, shaking her head. Vixley's jaw dropped. What is wrong with his parents? She exclaimed. I mean, my dad and I may not get on the best, but at least I've always known that he cares about me. Sounds like your guy never even knew that much. They were in their late fifties when he was born, and as Knight told me, they were all ready to go into early retirement when Knight's mom got the news. Paige sighed, still throwing her a heated glare. They were suddenly required by social customs to get back to work. With their other kids all grown up, they didn't really shift back from adult-kid relationship to kid-kid relationship. Celestia knows that was proven at his talent mitzvah. I'm almost afraid to ask, Rex said tentatively, the diamond dog looking everywhere but at her. Let's just say it was the straw that broke the camel's back for night, and he pretty much gave up on them. He has got a lot better. He's been calmer and well-balanced since then. Paige rubbed her face and winced, before tilting her head back at Vittle again. Until today. Hey, Vittle snapped, feeling her heart race. How was I supposed to know this? If I knew that telling him what to do would cause him to flip out, I would not have told him what to do like that. Oh, what were we supposed to do? Just blurt it out? Paige rolled her eyes before jabbing a hoof into her chest. Oh, hi. This is Nightblade, the youngest member of the Blade family, and has a ton of issues and almost no self-confidence. How do you do? Well, of course not, but come, the... Pa Vittle began to fight back when she felt someone push her backward. Looking up, she saw Vix Lee had stepped in between them, using her hammers to push them apart. Both of you, stop it. Vix Lee glared at the unicorn changeling mare. Paige, take a moment to breathe and calm down. Vittle, stop trying to defend yourself and admit you're wrong here, and you treated Knight like utter trash for some reason. Fine, I may have treated Knight poorly for some reason. I don't know why that freaking nutcase bothered me so badly, Vittle huffed, rolling her eyes. Did you ever interact with a co noble Awizotl in the past, Vittle? Paige asked her in a cold tone. One that really treated you poorly? Yeah, Vittle said, thinking of Chantico. How terrible she treated her because Vittle was with... Vittle froze, feeling her blood run cold. Chantico had always nitpicked whatever she did, finding ways to make her feel like she was nothing. Less than nothing. Kehihicho! She muttered to herself as a wave of shame, regret, and horror ran through her, relieving what reliving what should have been her most special day that she had ruined with her logic. I thought so, Paige said coldly. Vittle was confused for a second about how Paige understood her when she realized that she was talking about feeling or her emotions. Perhaps now you understand how you made Knight feel the entire time? With her head hanging low, Vittle felt the absolute worst for the second time in her life, and for the second time in her life began to cry. I already have an idea how to find Knight, Paige said sharply, taking control of the situation. Find my love, Nightblade, she said into her necklace, with nothing happening. The unicorn changeling frowned and held out her necklace and said again, Find my love, Nightblade. Still nothing. Find my love, Nightblade. Find my love, Nightblade. Find my love, Nightblade. Rex, why isn't it working? 
Rex stepped over to Paige, or whatever her real name was, and picked up the necklace and examined it with his special glasses and winced for some reason. It is working as intended, Paige Turner, but... But what? She snapped, glaring down at Rex. Paige, or whatever your true name is, look, my mom, my birth mom, named me Lamella Armor the Tenth, but Hush Tone named me Paige Turner, and I am Paige Turner. She hissed, before she forced herself backwards. So, Rex, can you please tell me why it is not working? Paige, do you still love Knight? The question caused Viddle to snap her head upwards, and she was able to see the shock on the changeling unicorn hybrid's face. What kind of question is that? What happened was a mistake, Rex, Paige said, while she began to look fidgety. I understand that, but Paige, do you still love him? Rex pressed the issue, with Paige beginning to look very panicky. I... I... she stammered, stumbling backwards before hitting the wall behind her. I don't know. Part 2. Nightblade. Thwack! 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 Knight bit his lip hard as he messed up this simple exercise again, his sword stuck in the tree he was practicing on. He did not stop biting until he felt the iron taste of blood, the liquid in his mouth causing his stomach to quiver in revulsion. As with the other times, he did not try and hold back, forcing his body to dry heave again and send him to the ground as the weak idiot he was. The pain in his gut was in the pain his gut was in did nothing to take away from the agony that was going through his head as his, his mind forced him to re relive that moment he had attacked Paige fresh tears <coughs> ran down his face as he rolled around in the dirty isolated hill in the center of the forest as the guilt of what he had done to the mare he loved promised to break him mentally but refused to send him insane, and thus leave him without the consequences of his action. It was better. Losing his mind was the coward's way out, and he was not, uh... Ah, who am I kidding? Knight sobbed to himself, holding his barrel tightly. I'm not anything good or noble. This we agree upon. A voice from behind, a voice Knight knew. A voice that Knight knew was truly responsible for what happened to Paige. With a growl, he spun up from the ground, grabbing his sword, and went for a horizontal slash to make the real villain pay. Only for Balance to step out of his reach and backhoof Knight as he made his turn. You are a failure. For test after test after test, you failed. Every test I put forth for you, and you failed all of them. Shut up, Knight spat as he stumbled to his hooves. I don't care about you or your stupid elements. He forced himself to do a diagonal slice against the spirit, only for it to move out of the way again and bring its hoof down on his neck. Again, you fail a simple test, Balance shouted at him, keeping pressure on Knight's neck as it kicked away his sword. So much hangs in balance, and it could all fall to ruin and failure because of you. I don't call... Knight's words were choked out of him as balance increased its pressure on his neck. I do not care what you think, Knight. You were chosen for this duty long before you were born. You were born to perform this duty. And yet, because of your selfishness and self-centeredness, everything could be lost. Balance roared into his head, the pressure on his neck never changing. I am running out of tests to give to you, for you to awaken your element, Knight. And either you will be one more step into saving this world, or be the one that damns it to Tartarus. The weight on his neck shifted, and doing his best not to force Doing his best to force his body not to gasp for air and further his own deserved punishment, Knight managed to croak out. But Paige, 
Valance grabbed him and threw him across the hill, crashing into several trees before hitting the ground and coming to a stop just before the lip of the hill. Knight was not given a second chance to catch his breath before Balance crashed down onto him, a hoof pressing into his ribs. Again, you fail a simplistic test, Balance said, making Knight feel as worthless as he did back home. One that could have been enough for you to awaken your element, but again, your selfish nature comes first. Balance loomed in close, staring Knight directly in the eyes. Now listen t to me, for this will be your final test, and you will not speak until I am finished. It then dragged Knight upwards and tilted his head in one direction. That way you will find your nephew on patrol. If you go to him, he will aid you in your return to Canterlot. In time, you will be able to put this entire thing behind you and return to the life you once had. It then forcefully turned his head the other direction. This way is where the rest of the elements are. They are currently walking into danger, and while they will receive aid soon, they will not get it without suffering. The notion of Paige being in danger almost caused his heart to leap into his mouth, but before he could even think to ask what kind of danger, Balance continued its speech. Know this. Because of your actions, your assault against kindness itself, Paige Turner will never love you as she once did. Because of what you did, the love you two had is gone, and will never be as it was once. And you coming to the element's aid will not bring it back. Knight froze at that. Hearing that Paige Turner no longer loved him, and that there was no way for him to fix things, was almost too much for him to take. He began to shake at the very idea that she now hated him. The one person he knew that actually loved him for him. His entire body beginning to break down at this. One way you will get everything you ever wanted. The other you will regain what you lost. Balance said as it moved off of his chest. It is your choice, Nightblade. This is my final test onto you. And then Balance was gone. Knight stared at the ground, letting the words eat at him, the guilt of his actions eating away at him even more. She no longer loved him. He was tired. Tired from everything. He knew that he and Striking Blade didn't get along, but the fact that his older nephew could help him... She didn't love him anymore. He didn't care anymore. Going with them had ruined his life. He was so tired. So very tired. He was out of his depth. He didn't know what to do. He just wanted some pony to take charge of things, to let some pony else worry about things. He was tired of ponies yelling at him, hating him for no reason. He would be rather be neglected like before than deal with all this trouble. He owed Riddle, Rex, Vixley, and Windbreaker and her nothing. He could easily do it. He just had to fly off in that direction and find striking, and then everything would be taken care of. He could go home, crawl under his blankets, and pretend this never happened. His parents might even recognize that he existed after all this. Despite how much he hated them, this is what he always wanted, and he could get everything he lost. He grabbed his sword and started beating his tired wings lifting himself clumsily into the sky. He could punish himself for it later, and began to fly to where his nephew was. They will be in danger. They will receive aid, but they will suffer. The memory of what Balance had said struck him out of the sky, crashing back into the hilltop that stood as an island from the rest of the landscape. He could see Vix Lee and Rex being attacked by some horrific creature in his head unable to defeat it. I don't care. They don't care about me, he muttered to himself, pawing the ground with his eyes shut tight. He saw Windbreaker and Viddle fighting some monstrosity so close to death. I don't care about them, 
They've always hated me, he whispered to himself, tears threatening to escape his eyes as he dug up the ground, biting his lip hard enough to pierce through the flesh. The pain, for once, wasn't helping him. He saw her in danger, something threatening her. She hates me. I attacked her, and she hates me, he shouted, sobbing hard enough for his chest to hurt. Why do I have to keep on suffering? Why is it always me? Why? 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 He shouted to the heavens, breaking down as he began to throw everything within reach. Why can't I ever be happy? Why? What have I done so wrong? He wanted to claw his face off. He wanted to die. Maybe that way he could be happy, with no one always angry at him. Through his tears, Knight spotted something glittering in front of him, and without knowing why, he was drawn to it. Stumbling forwards, his legs weak because he was weak, he had battered le- and he had battered the legs for being weak before. He found it was his signet ring. It had escaped his pack after it was put in there when they were still in Canterlot. He stared at it, remembering what it meant, what it said he was. Suddenly, he knew exactly what he had to do. Dropping the wing ring onto the ground and grabbing his sword, Knight did his best to stifle everything he was feeling as he flew off into the sky. His reserve. Resolve. Firm. Part 4. V no, wait. Part 3. Vittel. Is everything packed up, Rex? Paige asked sharply, causing the Owie's Otalus to flinch. The dressing down she'd gotten from Paige still stung, with the weight of what had happened still heavy on her, and how much she had messed up. She couldn't believe that she had been transplanting her views on Chantico onto Knight, but it made too much sense and she felt terrible for it. Yes, Rex said uncertainly, clearly uncomfortable with the shift of power between her and Paige. Wind, how is your throat? Better, he rasped, wincing in pain and rubbing his throat. I can talk in bigger bursts now. That will have to do, Rex said, bobbing his head and turning to Cole, oh, turning to face Fix Lee who was starting to perk up since the... She wasn't sure what to call what had happened. Are you all right, Vixley? E yeah, right as could be. She flashed them a weak smile that the Minotaur was clearly forcing onto her face. Then she shook her head and put on a proper smile, which was actually comforting. Come on, guys. Let's go get that batty bat of ours back. Her eyes immediately fell worried if she was overdoing it again, as when they had first met. Yes, let's go, Paige said, fluttering her wings briefly as she opened the door. Her bruised chitin was healing up nicely with her magic and Rex's healing potions, although she still had a nasty black eye and was wincing every once in a while. Paige told them it came at her being unable to go back to her unicorn skin for a while although she still had her cutie mark on her backside. Stepping outside at last, Vittle flicked her ears as she looked around the area before she found herself glancing at Paige for guidance. She could understand why Paige had kept quiet about the entire matter, but seriously, with Paige being able to sense emotions and thus other people, they could have breezed through Canterlot without a single headache. She then felt a wave of guilt for thinking that, and saw Paige's ears twitch all of a sudden, and very quickly glanced towards her. Wait a second, Vittle thought to herself, frowning. Paige, are you reading my emotions? Well, it's not ha Well, it's hard not to when you're broadcasting like that, Paige snapped as she turned around to face her, hissing briefly before letting out a sigh and rubbing her face with her hoof. I'm sorry, I'm just still very shaken up by what happened. Shaking her head, her cheeks were dark with embarrassment. Besides, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's actually harder for us to block out others' emotions than it is to deliberately sense them, especially when they're high. High? 
Rex asked, tilting his head. He already had his notebook out and was scribbling down facts. Yes, that's how we describe them, when someone is really emitting an emotion, like depressing shin level sadness, wedding level love, all of your sour tasting guilt. It becomes near impossible to just ignore, especially when you get a jolt of it. I can taste it in the back of my... Well, not mouth exactly, but it's close enough to feel like it's in the back of my mouth, and no amount of water will, will wash it out. Is there anything we can do to help you out? Vixley asked, scratching her head. Like, try not to feel it or whatever? No, please don't do that. Rex. Paige said with real desperation in her voice. Blocking an emotion only creates a backlog that can send a wave down my throat later on, and then I'd have to deal with everything tasting sour for at least a few weeks. <sighs> Just do what you need to do to move on if you want to help. Okay, Fiddle said softly, with Paige looking at her, making her feel guilty again. Paige sighed, shaking her head before rolling her eyes and walking forwards again. This made Viddle frown. While she felt horrible about what she did, Paige was taking advantage of the situation. One more thing. Why are you being so... aggressive all of a sudden? Beyond the obvious, of course. Because I don't need to watch what I say or act anymore, as you know I'm a halfling now. Paige snapped back before a tiny smile appeared on her face. You know, despite how horrible it came out, I feel so good that I don't have to hesitate over everything I do or say to make sure I'm not caught by other people. And by the way, I had to deal with your bitter annoyance at night this entire time, and be careful not to let it slip why I wanted you to make nice with him beyond the fact he was my cult friend. Paige let out a sigh before shaking her head again. I'm sorry for all this snapping I'm doing, but it feels so good to get this off my chest. It's okay, Vixley smiled, patting Paige between her wings. You can't be good all the time, and there needs to be times when you can be an ass to make sure your head doesn't explode from keeping all of your assiness inside. Everyone snorted at that, with wind rinsing and rubbing his throat again. Vittel felt a bit more confident about herself again, and turned to look at Rex. So, you made the charms that let Paige and Knight find each other, and I know Paige's doesn't work anymore, but isn't there a way you could use it to find Knight? I suppose I could, but it would take a lot of time, as I do not have access to all the resources on Paw. And to be honest, he said, before his face fell, I do not like the notion of leaving Knight alone for a longer period of time than already necessary. Vittle flinched at that, the unspoken worry that Knight would kill himself hanging over their heads, and it would be her fault if he did so. Hate to be... that guy, Wind wheezed a bit less than before, eyeing the rest of them. But what then? I don't think he'll rejoin us, and... What are we to do about the whole element thing? He still has one, and... Wind trailed off, reminding them of that fact, too. Vittle wasn't sure she wanted Knight back with them, but she didn't want his death on her shoulders, either. Look, we'll deal with that once we get there, Vittle said as she walked near the front of the group. We'll head for the town and ask for help there. Do you think we can get those changelings to help us? No, Paige said, shaking her head in the negative. Memorizing Gaze, their leader, told me he needs to keep up appearances in Canterlot and report back to Gentle Step. He said he'd keep an eye on her for us, but I can't ask him or his guards to turn around for night. It is still astounding that they would actually have changelings working with the government. Rex said, shaking his head. I would have thought that with changelings in tandem with the guards, that they would have found your queen ages ago, Page Turner. They're not with the hive. I couldn't sense them until they were in my face. And besides, no changeling would ever give up the queen. Not even memorizing would do so if ordered to. 
page said hotly. It's been a thousand years, and the queen has never been given up. And they have tried to break completely broken changelings to give her up. It turns out that threatening our queen is a good way to rebuild a changeling in an instant, causing them to regain their courage and spirit. Paige chuckled as they walked through the forest. What would happen, Pagey, if some bug changeling gave up the queen? Vixley asked, spinning Lady Kabonk around. It would be the end of our changeling hive, Paige said simply. There is something called the Three Pillars that would keep a changeling hive going. The queen, the hive mind body, and the sages of the past. When Equestria attacked Queen Chrysalis, they timed their attacks on the other two pillars before going after her, to maximize the chaos with the death of the hive mind body and the sages of the past. From what I have heard, the queen could alter some changelings to recreate the hive mind body and train new sages of the past, but it would alert the Equestrians and... Paige trailed off, but it was clear what she was hinting at. By end, you mean... Wind waved his talon in the air as they walked into a massive clearing. I meant what I said, Paige said, turning her black head to look at Windbreaker. The death of the Queen would cost us everything. We would be changelings in looks only, because we couldn't transform or taste emotions. Even our ability to use magic would probably be lost if she were to die. That's horrific. Rex barked in genuine terror. Do the ponies know of this cause and effect? I... I don't know, Paige stuttered, causing Viddle to raise an eyebrow. She wasn't sure if the changeling pony was lying or not, but before she could prod further, she saw Paige's head snap around, and her ears flick around. Taking a sniff in the air, she said softly, We're not alone, and there are a lot of angry people around. That you are, you buggy! A somewhat familiar voice sneered as a dirty brown unicorn pony stepped out with a whole bunch of ponies of different tribes right behind him. And I am going to enjoy this, you ugly bug! Vix Lee reached for one of her hammers. Vittle heard a sharp cry as several of the group's unicorns suddenly charged up their horns and yanked both hammers away from her. At the same time, several massive, bulky earth ponies charged at her and began forcing her to the ground, despite her best efforts to resist. Nearby, Windbreaker let out a screech as he was dive-bombed by a group of pegasi, one ripping his crossbow and saddlebags away, while the others tackled him. As another two grabbed Vittle herself, yet another earth pony pounced on Rex, knocking him to his back and pressing a heavy hoof against his chest. As she struggled against her captors, Vittle saw a dirty gray aura seize Paige, and quickly realized the creep in charge was dragging her closer to him as the changeling unicorn hybrid tried to struggle out of his grip. Remember me, buggy? He sneered as he held Paige very close to him, his magic around her neck. You and your broken pegasus nearly got me napped for burning that place down. He squeezed with his magic until she let out a squawk of pain, causing him to laugh. But now it's you that the government wants, and from what I've heard, they'll be happy with just one of you alive when we collect the bounty. The look on his face told Vittle exactly what the monster was planning, and by the horrified look on Paige's face, she knew it too. Kill the rest of them while I take care of this buggy, he shouted over his shoulder as he began to drag Paige away, but Vittle's view was blocked by a pony holding a sword in his hooves. Her head began to race as the pony held the sword above her head, with the two ponies holding her steady despite her best effort to struggle away. She didn't want to die like this, but she didn't see any way out. He was about to bring the sword down, and she shut her eyes, and felt something warm splattering over her. But she wasn't dead. Opening her eyes, Vittle saw the glint of a sword in her face. 
with the pony in front of her looking completely surprised at the sword in his chest. Before any of them could comprehend what was going on, the sword was pulled out and her would-be killer knocked over, with Knight swinging his sword down diagonally, slicing the neck open of the pony on her left and slicing the guts of the one on her right. He then spun around, kicking the dropped sword towards her as he leapt after the pony on Rex, with Vix Lee up and roaring as the Minotaur was tossing ponies around with no problem. Paige had vanished for a second before reappearing, using her magic to smash those of What's-His-Name's gang on Windbreaker off of the Griffin. Vittle was lost in what she should do, holding the sword clumsily in her paw. She let out a yelp as someone came at her, swinging the sword as best she could. Stumbling backwards over the dying ponies, Vittle saw a pony hold a small dagger overhead before a sword jabbed out of their neck and fell over, choking on their own blood. Knight gave her a worried look before he threw himself back into the brawl, with Vittle being aware that she might have to take lives to survive this. Looking at the growing fight, she could see that Windbreaker and Rex were side by side, and Vix Lee was smashing through ponies with a pony, and Paige was alone. What she saw next took her breath away. There was an earth pony creeping up on Windbreaker, and the Griffin had no clue what was about to happen. Both her and Knight could see this. She knew that there was no way she could get to Wind in time, but Knight could, which meant he had a choice between the Changeling Unicorn and the Griffin. <clears throat> Knight let out a wordless shout as he flew past Paige and tackled the pony over biting his neck. Vittle let out a shout as a Pegasus tried to do a dive attack, swinging the sword upwards and having blood splash down on her before the body hit her. Shoving it off of her, Vittle forced herself to stop thinking and start fighting. The Griffin... Oh, part 4. Windbreaker. The Griffin jumped as he saw Knight tackle and whip, rip the throat out of someone sneaking up on him the bat pony flashing a look of concern at him. Knight! Duck! he shouted as he took his crossbow with both of his talons and fired at the pony sneaking up on Knight. Thanking the goddesses that Knight actually listened, Windbreaker managed to nail the thug in the face. Standing back upright, Knight and Windbreaker shared a look of understanding and nodded to each other before focusing on their fights. He was glad Knight was back, and not just because he was able to deal with a lot of them, he was actually glad to see he was okay, and he found himself really worried that something bad could happen tonight, or the rest of the guys. Fire in the hole! Rex shouted beside him, throwing a bottle over his shoulder and into the mass of enemies with a sudden wave of heat smashing into them, making Windbreaker glad they had this wall of rock as cover. The Diamond Dog turned to him and asked, How are you doing? Fine, Windbreaker shouted, moving himself into a proper stance remembering what Knight had said before. Nailing a lot of them, he said with a smirk on his face, as he began to poke his head out. I think we can win the... BOOM! Wind threw himself backwards as what sounded like lightning went off next to his head, part of the rock wall exploding. What was that? he shouted, holding his head. They have a Manchurian dragon, Rex whispered softly. They've got a dragon? Windbreaker asked about to look around for that scaly thing when Rex dragged him down. They've got a Manchurian dragon! Rex shouted in a gruff voice, his usual calm and scholarly manner of speaking gone. Do you have any idea how dangerous they are? No, he said in a timid voice as Rex forced him low, although Windbreaker kept his eyes upwards. I've heard how dangerous dragons can be, but... With an annoyed growl as another explosion went off, Rex growled in his ear, Manchurian dragons are not dragons! He then scanned the sky, before grabbing and tilting his head upwards and pointed at a pegasus, holding a strange metal tube oddly as she began to stuff something in one end. That is a Manchurian dragon. It is a dangerous weapon that fires metal at very fast speeds, rips insides apart, and packs a very strong punch. Rex growled the last of his words which only wind worried Windbreaker more to see the smartest of them act like this. Before Rex could stop him, or he could even think better of this, Windbreaker took to the sky and began to wrestle with the Pegasus. 
He wrapped his talons around the middle part of the Manchurian dragon, struggling to get hold of it before the pony could use it again. He wasn't sure how he could fight this pony. The Pegasus was doing her best to bash his head in, to begin with her head. Without being even aware of how the switch came about, Windbreaker remembered that he was a griffin, and that they used to be predators to ponies. Feeling some Falling into some ancient instinct, he darted his beak forwards and snatched one of the eyeballs out of her face and gobbled it down. It was instantly effective. The Pegasus mare screamed in pain and let go of the Manchurian dragon, crashing into the ground as she stopped flying. She did not stop screaming in pain, however. Landing next to Rex with the weapon in his talons, Windbreaker began to retch as he realized he just ate some pony's eyeball while Rex took the Manchurian dragon and snapped it in half. That was completely insane, Windbreaker, Rex said, eyeing him with concern as he dropped the parts of the strange weapon onto the ground and started throwing more of his potions at the attacking ponies. Are you well enough to continue, or should we drop backwards? I'm good, Windbreaker said as he picked up his crossbow, loaded a bolt, and sent a charging earth pony, hooves over tail. Let's end this. Part 5. Vittel She took a step backwards as the fight slowed down enough for her to do so, panting for air. She had managed to get her knuckle dusters on and was doing her best to help out. Vittel was still very uneasy with killing, but she had already done the deed and it was starting to get easier, especially when it came down to either her living or her not living in the end. She felt a gust of air overhead as night flew by and knocked over an earth pony while stabbing them in the gut. You okay? Knight asked her, scanning the battlefield with his back to her. I think so, Vittle said as she looked him over. He had a number of cuts on him, with a lot of blood from the ponies he had been killing. Vittle was so glad he was on their side. Knight was probably the only reason they were still alive. You think we can win this? No, Knight said curtly causing the Owie Zodalus to gulp, as she was aware of how big What's-His-Name's gang really was. But Balance told me help would be near. Vittle took this in, before working on how to use it for their benefits. Rex and Wind were fighting back to back. No way she could get one of them out. Vixley was in her own little world of combat, but Knight, like Knight, trying to take either of them out of it could be deadly for the Minotaur or Bat Pony. Vittle couldn't go herself. It didn't feel right for her to leave the gang like that. Which left Paige. Paige has to get the help, Vittle said, looking at the mare holding back several attackers with strong shields that the librarian was using to knock them around at the same time. The knight looked at her and nodded, the two of them agreeing on the plan without any words said. The two promptly charged the attackers, knight knocking down two of the flyers, the two flyers, while Vittel pounced on and cut the neck of the unicorn. Moving her shield around, Paige looked at them with a tiny bit of confusion. Knight said that Balance said that there's help nearby, Vittel said, as she turned her focus back to the fight. Go see if you can find it. I... Vittel risked turning her head backwards to see Knight and Paige share a look before Knight turned away and leapt after another pony. Got it, Paige said her necklaces swaying slightly before she turned the other direction and darted into the forest. Page Turner Seeing Knight like that had been rough. She had wanted to say something to him, but she didn't know what. It wasn't helping that he was feeling that empty. She'd heard that only those past depression would be like this, and it worried her. Promising herself that she would talk to him after all this was over with, she flicked her ears as she heard some pony, and felt several ponies nearby. Hey, is some pony out there? She called out as she ran towards them. We need some help. Me and my fr- The words died in her mouth as she found herself in front of almost a dozen ponies in cloaks and blank white masks. The infamous questioning order. Standing right in front of her, and she was not disguised as her normal self. Already, one had a sword out ready to kill her. Part 7. Nightblade With his attention focused on Paige fleeing through the forest for safety a tiny bit longer, 
he turned his attention back to the battle. He let out a hiss of pain as some pony used a modified Kursigama with an extra blade attached to it. It was holding him by his right wing, digging into the membrane, and the pony no doubt using it to try to hold him back, thinking Knight would panic and flee, thus tearing his wing up more. Unfortunately for the pony, Knight did the exact opposite and flew towards them, with the stallion's eyes widening as Knight closed the distance and smashed the pony's windpipe. Shifting his wing a bit to ease the pain, he had all of three seconds to react when some pony used Vix Lee's real hammer to smash him in the side and send him rolling across the ground until he crashed into a body. Wheezing in pain, he was looking upright when he heard a whistle of a blade coming towards him. He raised a determined point to block the attack, but it was sloppy and weak. He let out a wince of pain as his sword broke in half. Bits of metal cut his face and blinded him in his right eye. I don't get why you're here, Sharp Point growled at him, holding a sword over his head. And I don't care, as you and the rest of them are dead. I'll die before I let any... before I let you harm any of them. Knight snapped back, his good eye closing as the blade fell. When he opened his eyes up, Nightblade knew he was dead and in Tartarus. I suspect he's not dead and in Tartarus, but we'll find out next chapter. Thank you for listening to the second episode of My Little Pony Censorship is Magic. I have been your host? Yeah, I don't do those things. <clears throat> Sharp Point has not cleaned up his mouth any since last time, and with tempers this high, the main cast has also been acting rather foul-mouthed. Anyway, on to the story itself. I liked the cannon bit. I didn't know what it was until he specified they weren't griffins. At... It was a... I mean dragons. Ah, uh, yes. I didn't see the cannon coming, but it fits everything afterward. It's perfect, yes. <sighs> Old-timey cannons were very dangerous to their wielders, and also not terribly great to be on the receiving end of. Yes, I can see why they would not be generally used by the guards. Um, thank you for listening. I am glad Knight is still with them. Unfortunate he and Paige had, uh... They, they're probably, they've broken up. It hasn't been long enough to really decide where they are now. They're still, you know, haven't had a good chance to talk about it. Life and death situations being thrown at them. <sighs> but he's still around, which is good. I wonder if Balance has to go help the other team every time Balance builds a test for them to go through. Because that could be a problem. Especially if Knight's been failing as many tests as Balance says. This could be problematic. I wonder how the questioning order feels about the... A gang. Hopefully not well, so that it can be some sort of a three-way fight, because otherwise they're pretty much doomed at this point. Unless a really big third group shows up we don't know about, or fourth, I guess. Them, the questioning order, and the gang are the first three. Hopefully the gang and the questioning order don't get along well. I can't think of anything else I have to say about this one. Oh, um, Night, not Night, Windbreaker ripping the guy's eyeball out. It, yeah, that's, that's a great tactic he used there, and it's kind of reassuring to know that that wasn't his first thing he went to, yeah. And he threw up the eyeball afterward, but... In life or death situation, the teeth, or in this case, beak, are not a weapon to ignore, especially in a grapple. 
I have never been in a situation where that came up, but I do know that because I know things. Things which could be viewed as suspicious that I know in great number. But honest, I'm just curious and weird. Not any sort of a criminal or anything. No need to report me, everyone. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you for listening. Have a good time, everyone. Goodbye.